Hello there, people of the internet. I play with military surplus firearms all the time. I got a huge collection. That's basically what my YouTube channel is. If you like that type of stuff, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel because that's basically what we play around with all the time. In order to feed these old rifles, uh, I find myself oftentimes trying to find surplus ammunition because surplus ammunition tends to be a little cheaper than modern production ammunition in some instances. That's not really the case nowadays with 762 by 54 rimmed. Uh, they want basically the same price for corrosive surplus ammo as they do for modern production stuff, but that's an argument for another topic. I try to find surplus ammunition for these old surplus rifles, but there's some rifles out there that ammunition can simply not be found for. And so as a result, I had to learn how to reload. So one of the beautiful things about reloading is I can get ammunition for rifles that I normally would not be able to shoot. Speaking of shooting, if you want to see me bring some of these military surplus firearms out to a range, then go ahead and uh, well, look in the description. You're going to find links to Patreon and Utreon, or pick yourself up a shirt. I have those for sale below or just do a one-time donation through the shirt page. All of that will help the cause and uh, get me back out onto a range, or if all you can do is like, share, and subscribe, that will definitely be plenty beneficial. So whenever I'm reloading for my military surplus rifles, if I can't manage to find surplus ammunition, like this right here is 8mm Mauser uh, Yugoslavian surplus, specifically for my M48 Mauser that I have right here that I keep showing off, if I I uh, can manage to find surplus ammo that I know is going to be reliable and function well and be accurate, etc., etc. Then I'll go ahead and pick it up, and it tends to be less expensive than modern production stuff. Uh, like, for example, this surplus Yugoslavian stuff, this stuff tends to run like 40 to 50 cents a shot, depending on how much you get, where it is that you get it from, etc., etc., uh, whereas, like, modern production 8mm Mauser can run you over a dollar a shot, so surplus is definitely the way to go. Unfortunately, surplus is a finite amount, and we will eventually run out of these resources, so learning how to reload is going to be good for whenever that inevitably happens, because that has happened with plenty of other rifles out there that exist on today's market. Like, for example, I've actually got a couple of examples here. This right here is an 1886 Lebel, chambered an 8mm Lebel. This is the first smokeless powder military rifle to be adopted by a major military force and uh, mass issued to the soldiers. Uh, this right here is a huge jump in firearms development, uh, but 8mm Lebel is not something that you can find very easily. There are batches that occasionally come in. It is still made to this day, but it's expensive and it's hard to find. And whenever you do find it, uh, the odds of you getting a whole bunch of it are pretty slim because quantities are very limited. This is just one of the rifles, the 8mm Lebel. This is just one of the rifles that learning to reload will help you keep it fed way more than just buying modern production factory ammunition or trying to source Surplus ammo. There is surplus ammo out there for 8 Bell, but it's unreliable, and it's definitely not something that you would want to feed it regularly, especially because surplus uh, 8mm Bell is becoming more and more rare. As we use it, it becomes more and more valuable and collectible. It goes from being surplus gun range items like 8mm Mauser Yugoslavian stuff to being things like, hey, I have this original 1886 Lebel cartridge and I've only got one of them and they're hard to find, so let's go ahead and not send it downrange. So learning to reload, you don't have to worry about the collectability of ammunition and you don't have to worry about trying to source ammunition. As long as you have the brass for yourself, you can go ahead and reload that brass uh, XYZ amount of times. Depends on the pressure, depends on how it is that you trim it, depends on whether or not it's annealed, etc., etc. You can get quite a few reloads out of a rifle cartridge. So not only can you reload ammunition for rifles that you normally wouldn't be able to find ammunition for, but actually you can reload uh, for rifles that normally would not be shot. Like, for example, I've got this 1888 Steyr straight pull right here. You guys have seen this on the channel a bunch of times now. And this is chambered in 8550 Steyr. And that is a cartridge that does not exist. You need to reload it yourself if you want to fire this. And so as a result, if you learn how to reload and you reload 8x50 Steyr to fire out of one of these rifles, or just any of the Steyr straight pull rifles chambered in that cartridge, 
then uh, you will have a significantly unique shooting experience because this is a type of ammunition that literally just does not exist nowadays. It hasn't been hasn't been made in a very long time, and so as a result of that, if you wanted the opportunity to try out something rare, then learning to reload so you can make ammo to try out something rare is going to be your best option. So ammunition availability is definitely one of the bigger points, especially if you're rocking old military surplus firearms like I am. Ammunition price point is also a huge, huge advantage. Like 8mm Mauser, uh, this stuff right here, oftentimes I will break down surplus components or I'll do whatever it is I have to do to get the components I need to uh, be able to reload this stuff. And I find that I can typically reload 8mm Mauser uh, for anywhere from 10 to 15 cents per shot, depending on what it is I'm using, whether or not it's been recycled, uh, the projectiles I'm using, etc., etc. I know I've got a lot of like Ethiopian stuff and Egyptian stuff and just, just uh, 8mm Mauser surplus that I've broken down into components that I've deemed to not be worthy because it's all duds and hang fires and I just use those for components for loading inside of modern brass with modern uh, modern primers so I don't have to worry about corrosive ammo either. So that's one of the huge benefits with, uh, with, with reloading because you can go ahead and make sure that even if you come across a batch of bad ammunition, you can take that bad ammunition, load it into new usable ammunition, and actually be able to utilize that ammunition. I know a lot of people completely pass up bad ammunition because they don't know or don't want to break it down and use it as components. So only ever they buy a batch of like Ethiopian 8mm Mauser or something like that, they just kind of see it as a complete waste of money. But if you learn how to reload this stuff, then guess what? That complete waste of money turns into a really, really, really good cost-saving item. So you save money, uh, you get way, way more ammunition availability because you can actually go out and make it. Another huge benefit with reloading ammunition is you can buy one single batch of bullets and you can load a bunch of different cartridges with that batch of bullets. This is a huge advantage. Like, for example... 308 diameter projectiles, I use that for loading so many different cartridges. Like for example, I have some 7.5 Swiss, I use it in 30 out 6, 308, 30, 40 Craig, I use it in my Mosnagant rifles, although that's a 311 diameter projectile, if memory serves me correctly. Well, at the 50 yard mark that I normally shoot at, I don't see that much of a loss in accuracy, so it's not really going to be that much of a difference. But you can use one particular cartridge, just go out and buy one particular style of bullet, one particular diameter, and you can load a bunch of different cartridges in exactly that. Like, I got a bunch of brass just laying around for a whole bunch of different military surplus firearms, right? And if I want to go out and shoot for not a lot of money, I'll go out and get myself some 308 diameter bullets, like cheapo full metal jackets or cheapo soft points or something like that, and I'll spend like five cents per bullet on that and then I'll load these cartridges with you know that very cheap ammunition that I got and, and that will be what I use. It's a really good way to be able to fire a bunch of different rounds, a bunch of different cartridges for not a lot of money, especially if you've already got the brass. If you don't have the brass, then if you're going with a mainstream cartridge like 30 out 6 or 7.62 NATO or 5.56 or something like that, then I guarantee you're going to be able to find the brass for pretty gosh darn cheap. And finally, I think that this right here is probably the absolute biggest positive pro, like, everything. This is the biggest positive whenever it comes to uh, reloading your own ammunition, and that is you can get really good quality ammunition for not a lot of money. Whenever I say good quality ammunition, I mean that you're going to have ammunition that is incredibly accurate, especially if you fine tune it to your particular rifle. Like, for example, a lot of people talk about GP11, this is GP11 7.5 Swiss, they talk about how accurate and capable and high quality this stuff is, but that's because uh, the bullet weight, bullet diameter, and powder type and powder amounts are incredibly 
uh, consistent. That's why you're able to get such tight groups and such incredible accuracy with these cartridges. I actually have a load of 7.5 Swiss that I do, which mimics very, very closely GP11 ammunition. Granted, I use uh, copper jacketed bullets and uh, different powder types and whatnot, but I make sure that my ammunition is consistent. And I know that I'm making it consistent because I'm doing it myself and I'm paying attention to everything that I'm doing. I'm getting it down to like one one hundredth of a grain to ensure that everything is absolutely consistent. And that is a really good way to be able to achieve very good accuracy. Normally with factory ammunition, uh, whenever companies are trying to produce as much of something as possible, there is some deviations whenever it comes to bullet weight and amounts of gunpowder inside, uh, inside of the cartridge that you're firing. And those little tiny deviations attribute to your bullet, you know, your first bullet will fire here because it's a certain bullet weight with a certain amount of powder. The next one has slight deviations and slight variance, and so you pull the trigger in the same exact spot that you did last time, but now your bullet lands here because things were slightly different. Well, whenever you have things that are as consistent as possible, you don't have those small uh, variations, and you can ensure that things will uh, be as consistent as possible whenever you decide to go ahead and load your own ammunition. On top of loading your own ammunition for consistency, you can also decide, or <clears throat> you can also decide the type of bullets that you're wanting to use. Like for example, a lot of people, myself included, just because I go to the gun range and I only shoot at like 40, 50 yards for the most part whenever I make my YouTube videos. Most people are going to use like full metal jackets or some sort of cheapo soft point for their hand loading purposes. But if you decide to use something for like hunting purposes or something like long range target shooting or something like that, you can get some very, very nice bullets that would normally not be available in uh, factory cartridges. And you can make sure that uh, your cartridges are nice and consistent. So you have a really nice projectile that's very consistent in size and weight and et cetera, et cetera. And then you can have some very uh, consistent powder chargers and powder types, et cetera, et cetera. With that, just ensure that you have the best chance possible to get a nice accurate round down range and a nice effective projectile. I normally don't reload for those purposes. I normally reload because it's one of the cheaper options. I run a gun channel, I do a lot of shooting. Yeah, I would definitely love to do more. Are you guys reloaders? If so, why is it that you started? Answer or tell me about it. Answer the question. Tell me about it. Uh, besides that, I don't think I have any other things to say about reloading ammunition, so I'm just going to go ahead and end this video. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below is a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I will see you guys on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs>